Hello, this is Brett from Survival Comms, and today we're going to talk about balans. The balan is perhaps one of the underappreciated components in your radio system, and it's a very important part because it's part of your antenna system, and your antenna system is extremely important to your station. So I just recently discovered that my HF wire antenna wasn't working correctly, so we're going to walk through troubleshooting that really quickly, and then we're going to walk through how we actually check a balan with simple test equipment that's available to most ham radio operators. Well, after the storm, I found the ballon in the yard, separated from the antenna. I didn't have lock nuts on it at that time. So it probably took some damage. I mean, this thing was flapping around in the breeze and everything pretty doggone bad during the storm. So let's go ahead and go through a few troubleshooting things to ascertain if it's the antenna or it's the ballon. So we already know what's going on. Let's go ahead and just bypass our ballon without disconnecting this. And the way you do that is, is just by having a jumper, an RF jumper, 50 ohm cable broken out to a couple of alligator clips. And you can see that we're not doing so bad right now. And when we hook up straight to our ballon, you can see that something's rotten in Denmark. So let's go ahead and DC this ballon, take it inside, see if we can take it apart and find out what happened. In the meantime, I've got this connection here that goes from an SO239 to window line that I'm using. And it's not a ballon, but it seems to be working just fine. So you can see the antenna itself survived the hurricane just fine. It was the ballon that was the weak link. This is that radio wave ballon. And you can see this thing's already exhibiting quite a bit of corrosion on these terminals. So that's not good. And we've got some corrosion down here. So obviously they didn't use any stainless steel hardware in the construction of this. Well, looking inside there, you can see that don't look so good. Everything's broken loose. So let's get this backside off of it. I can't believe how much corrosion and crap this thing's got already. I mean, this thing was just... I bought this thing for that ZS6 BKW video. All right. Our innards of our ballon right there, and everything's dry. It looks like just what happened is, is this magnet wire here has become disconnected from the the screws. Here are the screws that were the terminals in the ballon. When they assembled that ballon, they took the piece of PVC, they knocked two holes in the side of it, they put a star lock on this, slid it through there, and then used a nut to affix it, and these became the terminals on the side. Then they took this ballon, assembled, slid it through the bottom of the piece of PVC, used a couple of those sheet metal screws to tighten it up to the bottom of the PVC. Then they applied a ton of heat to this thing to just direct solder this to the magnet wire. When that window line was swinging back and forth with that ballon on there, it caused these contacts to fracture internally. When I came back outside and reattached the ballon at that point there, they were already broken, and that's the reason why I had a 13 to 1 SWR. The first test we're going to perform is an SWR test, and this is something you can easily do in the field as well. Just take a 50 ohm resistor and place it across the terminal. Since we have this out, we can do it this way. I have 25 ohms of resistance here and here, and then I have them tied together here. You can see that our SWR is acceptable, so this device, as far as this test is concerned, is just fine. And here's the test equipment configuration on the whiteboard. There's nothing to it. Now, this is for a 1 to 1 ballon. If we we're going to do a 4 to 1 ballon, we would just put 200 ohms across the terminals. If it was a 9 to 1, we would place 450 ohms. The next test we're going to perform is a common mode attenuation test. This is the bread and butter of a 1 to 1 ballon. A 1 to 1 ballon is not functioning as a transformer. It's one in, one out. So, what the 1 to 1 is is allowing our unbalanced feed line to attach to our balanced antenna and the ballon is preventing common mode currents of RF from traveling back down the feed line into our radio shack which is undesirable. 
it's not difficult to do. There's a lot of other content out there about doing this. This is the way I do it. You just use an inexpensive vector noise analyzer. These things are uh, like 70 or 80 bucks now, but they're an incredible tool. You're wanting to look for 20 dB of attenuation. That's considered to be the standard for a effective choke or a one-to-one -one ballon. You want the vector noise analyzer set for to measure log magnitude. You want it for S21. And of course, you want the device calibrated and you want it regulated for the cabling you're going to use. As far as cabling goes, it doesn't matter if you want to use one of these, which is just a, a breakout for alligator clips that attaches to your SMA connectors, or if you want to use a factory one or one that's purpose built for that purpose. But down here, you want to take both your grounds and tie both your grounds together like that. And then your device under test, your ballon, just go ahead and clip it on there. And that's going to take your center conductor and the outside of your connector and tie those together there. And then the output side, you want to take your other lead, which is hooked to S21 port, and clip onto that right there. And then look at the results over your swept frequency range you have selected. I typically select 1 to 30 megahertz. Now we're testing the ballon to see how much it attenuates common mode current. And you can see here it's not all that hot. At 80 meters it's like only minus 9 dB. So as we go further down here into 20 meters we're minus 19. And as we go further on and the most we're going to get attenuation wise is in the 10 meter band and we're looking at minus 20 db minus 20 db is typically what we consider to be a benchmark for ballon performance now we'll go ahead and do the test on a ballon that i built and this one's made of a different ferrite material which is better at lower frequencies of course so you can see that reflected here so the where the other ballon wasn't below 20 db in the 20 meter band this one is minus 28 and when we get down here into the 80 meter band we're at minus 34 db and then as bad as it gets at the end of the scale is minus 19.6 db in the fm portion of the 10 meter band the next test we're going to perform is an insertion loss test and insertion loss is bad. You want to keep that as minimal as possible over the swept frequency range, of course, which in this example, again, is 1 to 30 megahertz. So we've got our VNA, which we just used for testing common mode current. We've got our cabling is the same and it's already set up to what we want to measure and we're already regulated for the cabling. So we can go ahead and use it to test our device and this is the way we would configure that with the connections here instead of tying our grounds together what we're doing is, is breaking them out and tying into the ground and the center conductor and then our two outputs here and then sweeping it over the frequency range the next test we're performing is for insertion loss and you can see our results here were 0 0.06 db of insertion loss at 80 go to 20 you can see that our loss increases we're at almost eight tenths of a db and then it's really high when we get to the end of our scale here in the 10 meter band we're at minus 3.55 db now we're going to do the same test with one of the balance i built and you can see the results here we're a tenth of a db at 80 and when we get to 40 or 20 excuse me we're at 0.23 db so that's a, almost a half db improvement over the other one and once we get to the end of the scale here we're at 2.3 db of insertion loss this is bonus footage how will we check insertion loss across a four to one ballon now our test equipment that we're using is designed for 50 ohms in 50 ohms out so whenever we're taking our transformer here and we take our 50 ohm RF cable to the input side of the ballon and we try to measure across the 200 ohm side or the, the uh, 4 to 1 side, what we're going to have is, is erroneous results. So the way we would do this is, at least for the 
ham operator or someone without an access to a laboratory is going to be with two 50 ohm cables tied into the inputs of both four to one balance and then both of them tied together with hookup wire or some other type of feeder going between the terminals here and that's going to give us the sum insertion loss of both devices under test now if you had one device that was a brand new one and the second device was brand new and when you tested them initially you could surmise that the loss that you're seeing could be halved to show that this particular device has this much loss and then anytime that loss increases in subsequent tests with another ballon that the greater loss would be exhibited by this other ballon again it's not completely scientific and it's this is something that isn't discussed much but I thought I would go ahead and share what I know with you. Here's that test in progress. We have two four to one balance. This is one that I built and put in a first aid box a long time ago. And this is a brand new Palomar four to one. What we're doing is we're taking our VNA and we're feeding RF into our device. We've got our two balance, four to one balance connected to one another through our high impedance lines. And then we're receiving out of the 50 ohm line back to our VNA. And here are the results that we're getting. And this is in the 20 meter band. And we're looking at 0.41 dB of loss. And that is the sum of the loss across both of the devices under test. So again, it's difficult to surmise which device has more loss than the other one. If someone's got a better way to do this on uh, 4 to 1 or 9 to 1 balance, I'm all ears. Let me know in the comments. Now, what we discussed here is definitely not the total amount of tests you can perform on a ballon. And designing and building your own ballons is quite the rabbit hole to go down. And I wanted to just pass on the simple tests that you can perform with equipment that you may possess or that you may be able to purchase on your budget to establish the serviceability of an important item that's part of your antenna system. If anyone's got any tips or comments, please place them in the comments below. I hope this helps. This is Brett from Survival Comps. Till next time.